Okay, correct. Uh, for example five, uh, example five. Um, when you do the f equal to ma, uh, typo error uh, on my slide. So you only need to consider f and then ma. Uh. So we are now in chapter six, where we start to see the gravitational point or central mass, right? Um, so in chapter six, what you need to do is to is to draw the two free body diagram, uh, free body diagram and kinetic diagram. But your your free body diagram, what is different from the previous chapter, is to consider the center of mass, the G, and then you link with the moment that you learned in your static. Right. So the step also uh, almost the same. Right. So example six is on motorbike. So how do you know that this is chapter six question? You look at the, the picture, you always see the two. Huh? Um, your coming test, I think also have G. Huh? Uh, so if you see the diagram, all the dimensions was given and um, the mass was given, the M motorbike was given. So for motorbike, the M, was given and then the central mass of rider was given. Center of gravity position was given. Determine the minimum coefficient of static friction. You need to find the friction at the wheel here and the pathman in order for the rider to do a wheelie. What is wheelie is lift the front wheel off the ground as shown in the photo. So like this, right? Ah. So he want to he want you to determine what is the minimum friction of the ground so that you can do this action? All right. So what is the acceleration that is necessary to do this? Means what acceleration, the, the ram, huh? you need to do this one. Ignore the mass of the wheel and assume the front wheel is free to roll. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so the first step for solving chapter six question, you always start with free body diagram. Free body diagram, F equal to MA. So you, you copy the diagram. Um, then you put in all the force. Huh? You have the two gravitational force. One is on the bottom bike, one is on the rider. Which is, you have W and W2. Okay. So it's a bit different from the previous chapter, where chapter six, when you do the free body diagram, the first one you go is your W, okay? Then your NA and NB. Uh, just give you a hint for your final or for your test two. I forget already. Um, look carefully the question because you'll be seeing three, three wheels, three wheels problem, meaning one wheel in front, two wheels at the back. And then you need to determine the normal force for the each wheel at the back. Yes, so when you do calculation, remember to put two if the question in the diagram, you'll see two wheel there. Ah, did you see the question? You will, you will ask you to find, determine the contact forces. Contact forces means normal. Lah. Contact forces for each of the wheel, especially for the back. Ah, you will mention specifically just to remind you at the back got two wheel. So you need to put two and B for that question. Okay, uh, so uh, just give you an early reminder uh, before I forget. Okay, um, then you put in the friction. Okay, the friction force is going this way, right? Because the wheel is rotating clockwise, right? Rotating clockwise, that's why the force friction is going against the rotation. Okay, then there's no friction force at the at the front because we want to do the lift off uh, for the front screen. So for the front wheel, so your not contact is zero or no friction force. Okay, so you have done with your free body diagram. Then you do kinetic diagram. So kinetic diagram is deal with acceleration and velocity, right? So again, uh, for chapter six, what is different? 
for your kinetic diagram, you are actually combining the product of mass multiplied by acceleration. You, 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 you take the acceleration multiplied by mass, it actually turn into forces. Okay, so the previous chapter one, two, three, four, five, your kinetic is velocity and acceleration. But we come to chapter six, rigid body, chapter seven, chapter eight, you need to convert the left hand side of your uh, for your kinetic diagram is force huh? and not acceleration. Right. So M A become force, right? Why? What is the purpose of doing this one? Because you want to do, you want to use the moment, the moment uh, for the calculation. Okay. So again, you have two objects. So you have M A one, M A two. Okay. Then your contact point is at B. You look at the question, normally there's a focus point that you need to focus on. So in this case, it's at the back wheel. So I label as B. Once you mark as B, when you do moment later, all the forces at B will be gone. Right? So you do equation of motion. You need two equations. Huh? One is F equal to MA. You split into X and Y direction. So this is a normal one. You look at the free body diagram. Right, or you group X into left hand side, uh, MA on the right hand side. For the Y, normally the mistakes were done in the Y component because FY equal to AG. Your gravitational force, there's no Y component. So uh, most of it will confuse here, then you will stop here. Right, so this one will be zero for this case. And one more equation that you need to group the moment equation here. This is chapter six special equation. Uh, you need to consider moment. On the left hand side, it's a normal forces that create moment, which is your normal free body diagram. Then this one is the one that you see on your kinetic diagram. Okay, so this equation, uh, all the force moment B you refer to free body diagram at point B. You close B, then recall what you learned in your statics, how you find moment. It's a force times the perpendicular distance. Huh? So here, perpendicular distance is this one, 0.4, this one, 0.8, this one, 0 0.4, 0 0.407. Clockwise. And we have anticlockwise as positive. Anticlockwise positive. So this one become Negative, negative, positive. This one, on the right hand side, you look at the kinetic diagram. Again, MA is a force. MA is a force. You look at B. So this one will turn clockwise, so negative. This one also turn clockwise, negative. You take this one, multiply by the height of this one, 0.6. This one multiply by the height of 0 0.9. Okay, so chapter six, you need uh, two equations, F equal to MA, and moment, all the moment for free body diagram equal to all the moment in kinetic diagram. Okay, the rest is just the normal steps. Here, you will see what different, uh, what is the interesting part is that the two objects was joined together. Okay, so joined together. So you are actually seeing the M1 plus M2 G. Then same with this one. Huh? The rest is same. Only need to be careful on the acceleration in Y is zero because no Y direction. Moment, same. On the left-hand side is free body diagram. So you have one, two, three, three moment. Okay, but this one no moment huh? because zero. Then this one is kinetic diagram. Okay, you have two. Huh? So you solve all these simultaneous equation, you'll get the missing uh, uh, parameter there. Okay, this is how you solve it. So when you have this one, you find what is the minimum of the friction force. Your FB, you find just now. You have NB, the missing part is the Friction coefficient. All right. All right. Now, another one here. 
this is also same. It's a beam, or not beam, but it's a link linkage system. But when you see the the notation of G, means it's the chapter six question. And you see omega, you see theta, all this. You you need to use back the the one in the previous section. Huh? So you're given M. MVD was given support by two rod having. You can ignore the mass of these two. So determine the force developed in each rod if the instant 30 degree omega equal to six. Right. So this is a pin. This is a pin, pin, pin. When you have pin, how you draw your free body diagram? There's a two forces. Huh? Every time you see a pin, when you see a pin, you always have F, Y, and F, X. Huh? Right. Um, okay, here, this one, you can you can draw another side. Huh? You can draw F, X, so that you get positive value. Right. Okay. So all this, when you move, you know, point B and point D, collinear motion. So you draw the free body diagram. So for first link, A and B, omega is given six, the length is given. So this is collinear motion. When collinear motion, you know that um, velocity always tangent, and then acceleration, you have two components where you have collinear motion, normal and tangent. Uh, then there's an equation for normal and tangent also. All right. Okay, the rest you read. Recall every time you see a link with omega, alpha, link acceleration with omega and alpha. For normal component, for acceleration, always remember omega square r. Tangent, okay, tangent will be alpha something. Huh? So, free body diagram for BD, you take this one out, and then this one is a link. Right. So there's a tension of a uh, resultant tension that go along this truss, uh, this uh, link here. Right. So you put a, a a pulling force here. Right. Because if you stand here, you are you are feeling actually the this rod was pulling you. So that's why the arrow was pointing up and not pointing in. Right. So you complete the free body diagram, pointing out. TB and same with the D, and then you have W. Okay. You have done with the free body diagram, you continue with the kinematic diagram. Again, when you see G, your kinetic diagram, you must take account of mass. With it, you turn your acceleration multiplied by mass equal to force. Huh? So you can see the differences between the previous chapter and this chapter. So diagram for chapter six again, take account of mass and acceleration, turn it into force. So in this case, at the center of gravity, a center of mass, this rock, it will also move in the collinear motion also when it move up and down. The G will also swing in the collinear motion. So collinear motion, you have tangent and normal direction. Okay. So again, what is the purpose of uh, counting for mass and acceleration? We want to use the equation of moment. All right. Uh, so we have three unknown. Equation of motion and these three. Uh. So chapter six, very popular, uh, these three equations. F equal to MA break into X or Y or normal or tangent, depending on the diagram we have. And then you add one more, which is moment you extract from free body diagram equal to all the moment extract from kinetic diagram. Okay, the rest you can extract from the rest. Try to understand the principle, uh, principle or what, why we why are you doing uh, this. Huh? And the direction of your moment uh, stay consistent in our class. Anticlockwise is positive. You can do clockwise positive, but I will um, 
okay, my practice uh, uh, by default is anti-clockwise and to, to have a positive value in all my calculation, I will look at the diagram and then if the uh, and then see how the object swing. So if the object swing clockwise, I will do clockwise. Uh. If the swing, if the object do uh, anti-clockwise, I do anti-clockwise. Uh. But by default, I will do anti-clockwise. Uh. In general case, I'll do anti-clockwise. So equal to both sides. And why the kinetic moment is zero? Where? Where is the where, why why is why is uh, why 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 there is no moment here? What is your D? What is moment? Moment equal reference point ninety degree and force, right? You have force, but where is your force? Is at the jeep gravitational for uh central of mass, so no d, so zero. Uh, so this is a very tricky question, huh? Very tricky question. Okay, whose car is uh down there? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you solve the question by solving the simultaneous equation. Right. Next, we move to uh six point four. Equation of motion for rotation and fixed axis. Same procedure. The rest you read. I, I will just highlight the important steps. Huh? Okay, the rest you read. You already know what is angular velocity and acceleration already. Okay, this one you also seen this one. Tangent equal to alpha r, normal equal to omega squared r. This one by now you should already memorize. Huh? Okay. So again, you are seeing the same procedure. You always draw free body diagram equal to the kinetic diagram, but you take into the account the mass and the acceleration become forces. But now you look at the center of gravity. Okay. The rest you read, huh? This one I already know already. Just uh, just a recap, huh? So now. If you have an object that rotate at the fixed axis, there's a that pin to somewhere, and then this object rotate your moment at gravitational uh, center of mass will equal to I G. I is a second moment of inertia that you refer to the table and alpha. Okay, so this is a new equation for today. Every time you see that object pinned to somewhere and then it rotate, you need to recall this moment equation. Moment at gravity, uh, center of mass, G, equal to second moment at, uh, at the gravitational, at the center of mass, where this one you refer to chart and alpha. Okay, then F equal to MA, F equal to MA. Okay. Right, so you know that when this rotate, then you have a, a circular motion. So circular motion, we will use normal and tangent. Okay. okay. Then the rest, if you still cannot solve, you pull out the moment equation. Okay. If you still cannot solve, I still have lots of uh, unknown. You pull out equation, uh, you fix as one point, you find one point and then you find the moment. You compare free body diagram moment and kinetic diagram moment. Okay, now here, what is different here now is that when you have a rotating body, you have R, M, this one is what, uh, M, A is false, right? How do, how do you find moment? Again, F times D. So you look at the diagram, this one is just a simplified diagram. So how do you find the forces for all the force like this one? So you have a one forces here. So forces, you take, take the M times this uh, G and then times the R, you get the moment. And plus the IG alpha, right? Okay. 
So there's a derivation start here um, at the end. When you see a rotating object, your moment equation will reach mr square plus ig multiplied by alpha. This is a new equation for rotating at a fixed axis. Okay, so uh, you don't need to know how to derive this one, but this is the one that we expect to see in your solution. Okay. All right. So sometime we'll help you in the question. We say uh, by applying parallel axis theorem, we did this one. IO equal to IG plus MD square, which you learned in the early stage of chapter six. Right? So IO equal to IG plus MD square. Then you will see all these equations. So for 6.4 onwards, previously you only see three equations. Now you need to add one more equation if you have a rotating about axis. You need to add one more moment at somewhere equal to I at that reference point alpha this one you same okay so ma normal tangent change the what is normal alpha into omega because you are rotating so you cannot use the normal acceleration you need to apply the angular acceleration uh, and velocity so for normal a change to omega square r for tangent change to alpha r but the still concept still remain f equal to ma Okay, let's look at this one. So, when, 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 uh, how you know that you need to use uh, this equation? Normally, you have a round body that pinned to somewhere. Uh, for example, this uh, simplified case, you have a round body pinned to somewhere and you're given the O and G. Uh, then, this one is a, a, a fixed rotation question. So, an unbalanced object. This is unbalanced because there is cut somewhere here and the mass is unbalanced. Have a radius of gyration k equal to 0 0.8 meter. Now you remember you have a pendulum experiment, right? The one that you count 50 rotation. So that one, um, there's one parameter called gyration in that lab. So in this question, we use k equal to 0.8 meter about the axis pass through the center. Uh, if the release from rest determine horizontal vertical component of the reaction at point, this one. Again, when you see pin, automatic change the pin forces into x and y. This one, uh, convert this one into this one. So free body diagram, draw the object, draw the reaction at O, and then the G. Okay, G central mass always linked to W. Okay, G always linked to W. O, it depends on pin. So we have two pins, so we have two forces. The direction doesn't matter, but if you get negative means the one that you draw on your free body diagram is wrong. You need to flip it to another side. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, this is the tutorial sample, but is it okay if I flip ON to another side? The answer is yes. Okay, uh, so this is what we predict the, the, the reaction force. All right, so, and also this one was rotating in the circular motion. So there is a tangent direction and normal direction. But because this is uh, unbalanced, so we don't know where, where does the N and T. We only know that T is this direction, N is that direction. Why T pointing down? Because it tell you, does it tell you? Okay. Even if it does not tell you, ah, uh, yeah, uh, later. The G is at this point. So, center of uh, the weight will pull from here. So, even you release from rest, this object will turn clockwise. Okay. So, kinetic diagram, again, a free body diagram, all the forces. Kinetic diagram, combine your moment. Huh? So, your G. Central mass will move in a circular and convert this force into more, uh, uh, the acceleration into forces with MA. But this is a 
tangent direction. So tangent direction, F equal to MA, M, your A in tangent is alpha R. Okay, change it to alpha and not the normal. Then this whole thing will also rotate in IG alpha. This is the consideration under second moment of inertia. Right. Uh, so when you have a rotation body about an axis, you, in your free body diagram, you will see that this purple color arrow where consider the second moment of inertia times the alpha. Now, why does your angular velocity omega zero? Why your angular velocity is zero? You start from rest, right? And then your then you find the moment of inertia about G point. You refer to the table it will give you Ig equal to mk square. This one you refer to the table. Huh? So m was given, k given, you calculate. Huh? Okay. Then pull out the famous uh, equation, f equal to ma, two set, uh, normal and tangent, and then one more, mg equal to i alpha. So you substitute all the value, you find the missing pieces. Okay, the purpose of showing you this one is how you apply the new equation. Yeah. Then there will be something missing, still missing. So you need to use the, the moment at this point, at O. So moment at the free body diagram will equal to moment at the uh, kinetic diagram. So this one, moment over here will equal to this diagram. So here, if you fix at O point, these two forces gone because the D is zero and you only have one forces. So W multiplied by this length, you get moment. This one anti-clockwise, sorry, clockwise, All right? So then this one, um, in this case, I think, uh, let me check. Huh? Uh, if this one rotate this way, uh, I need to change my arrow here. Okay. Uh, okay. Then on this side, you have two part. This one you have two part. One is because of the mass at G. One is at for the whole body, but I give you I G alpha. Okay. So here you have two moment. Huh? This is moment. But this one not yet moment. This one is force. MA is a force. So force multi. So there you have a uh, m alpha r times r. So you have a uh, two times of r. Okay, the rest is just solving simultaneous equation. Okay. So next one, you need to find uh, I O alpha. How to find I, uh, I O at center here? I O equal to G plus M R square. Previously, our equation is I equal to I G plus M D square. Here we use R. Okay, here we use R. So you substitute the value. So I think I didn't show you how to get uh, how to substitute this one. Uh. But if you substitute the value, you'll get 1.3 something. Okay. Same procedure apply to example nine. You let the diagram it pin to somewhere. It pin to somewhere means it's fixed rotation at a fixed axis. So still same. You draw the free body diagram at point O. And then where is the gravitational force, right? So at here, your W is acting at the central mass. Although this question 
do not show you the gravitational force, you need to assume that it has a center of gravity or center of mass, sorry, center of mass. Huh? So we have pin again, pin, you have two forces, go one, go up, one, go to the left or right. Then you have a, a 60 Newton meter moment. And then you draw your kinetic diagram. Again, chapter six kinetic diagram, you consider the effect of mass. You change your acceleration, multiply by mass, get force, because the purpose is to get moment. Huh? So again, the center of mass will always take care of the mass or W. So mass over here, multiplied by A, you get the forces. Is tangent direction in a circular circular this is tangent your a is alpha r okay then normal your a is omega square r m a then you have ig alpha you have free body diagram kinetic diagram pull out the three equation f equal to m a MO equals something, MO equals something. Which one? Which one, OD? Uh, yeah, uh, OT. You can put, oh, you can flip this one. Uh, you can, you can. Uh, you'll get, if the answer you get is negative, means this, uh, this one, uh, your assumption is wrong. Okay, so you substitute again. Huh? Chapter six, you need to use um, central uh, at the central of mass. What is the moment? And then the, the effect of uh, uh, second moment of inertia, Ig alpha. You need to call this one out. All right, the rest is just substitution. Okay, how to get Ig? How to get this Ig? You refer to this body and then refer to the table. I show you how to do. So this is the object that in our question, right? Rod, ma. So you see this one rod, right? So this rod is your G as a center, right? Your rod, your G is at the center of the rod. So you are referring to this point. So you are looking at x, x, and y, y, and not x prime, y prime and not also Z. So you don't need to look at here, don't need to look at here, copy this one. All right, so your second moment is 12 ml squared. What is L? L is a length of that rod. Okay, you copy that equation, put into your calculation. That's why you get IG equal to 12 ml squared. Okay. The rest you substitute. So here you still cannot solve OT. You still have two parameters you cannot solve. Right? So how do you solve that one? By using one more equation. With this equation of motion. Uh, this one three can solve. Then you use one more. You use uh, equation of motion at O and kinetic mo moment at O. Okay, the previous one is more, is a one, one set of calculation. This is another set of calculation. You get the same answer. Huh? This is a second approach where you use the moment at O. Just now you use the moment at G. This one, this is another set. Huh? Another set of approach, you still get the same answer where you use moment at O. At another point. So, still same, you look at O, you see one moment and one 60 Newton meter. This one was given in the question. Then, this one, at O, you see one moment and then this force. Don't have this uh, M omega square R, don't moment because the D is zero. The D is zero, huh? Okay. Um, 
Okay, then you apply the second one, IO alpha. Okay, IO alpha, why it changed to 1 over 3 ml square and not 12? Because you're looking at Z direction. Huh? Okay, because it's look at Z direction. This uh, table. Huh? When you look at this direction, then you use 1 over 3. If you look at G, then you use, if you look at G effect, you use half, uh, 1 over 12 ml square. If you use at, uh, use at uh, N, the end point, why, this, why here? Because the O point in the question here, O point is at the end of the rod. At the end of the rod, so you refer to this chart, end of the rod is here. So you refer to X prime and Y prime. You use this side and not this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, one more example. Same. You look at the diagram and then there's a object pulling from A. Right? A mass was given. Um, radius of uh, uh, gyration was given, or you can you can look at as a radius. A cord is uh, ignore the mass um, attached to a block having mass. If the block is released, determine the drum angular acceleration. I mean this one have mass. If you drop this one, this one will rotate anticlockwise. Okay, so you draw the free body diagram. You have two solutions. You the first one. So draw free body diagram. You will pin, so there's two forces, X and Y, and then there's a tension tangent of cable, right? And then uh, always take into the effect of a weight, a weight or mg, W will pull down from the center. This is the balanced drum. Huh? Just now you have an unbalanced drum. So your G shifted outside. So here is a balanced drum, or did not mention unbalanced. So your G is at the center of the drum. So your 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 G center of mass will, will take care of the W. Then the 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 mass over here will give you the tension cable, right? So here you can solve your T because the mass is given gravitational. You know T, you know, so you substitute here. This one you can find. This one later you find from the all the uh, F equal to MA equation. Okay. So solution one, I consider separate system. Solution two, I will consider as one system. Later you will see, uh, I will draw the whole object as one for solution two. Now we are at uh, solution one. Huh? So your kinetic diagram, the block, Assume the block acceleration downwards at A. A at tangent direction. And this, this will rotate in an angular acceleration alpha in anticlockwise direction. Right. This XY is at the center of O. Center of O. So calculate the moment of drum. I equal to mk square. Right? Again, how to find this one? Refer to the chart. You have a this there, right? You substitute, you have m, you have k, you can find the mo, right? Then the three equation just now. Moment at O, you find the IO alpha, f equal to ma, change your a into omega square r. A into alpha R, consider in normal and tangent direction. Okay, then the rest you just substitute. Yeah, try to identify the steps. Huh? Why, why we do so and how we do so. Okay. Then you substitute, you solve for the, all the unknown, right? So what is interesting is F equal to MA, your acceleration in X is zero because there is no 
X movement is only moved in Y. Okay, so this is also a tricky question. If you pin to somewhere, uh, normally one axis will zero. This one's a rotating in Y, so you M A G Y have a magnitude there. Okay. Okay, the rest you read from the slides. Okay, now when we consider as a single body solution two, uh, I group as one, so I combine my 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 tension as one, so no forces along this uh, cable and be, be balance off. So I I just uh, combine the these two T and then see this one as one body. So when you look at one single system, you are actually looking at this object and then the um, the mounting at the center here, and then the A is pulling down with the W. Okay, then the whole the this will rotate at I alpha. So still same. Your A going down, A equal to alpha R. Because this one is in the tangent direction. So alpha R. Then you apply the moment equation at O. So this is from the free body diagram, left hand side, free body diagram, kinetic diagram. So moment, you only see one at O. You close this one, all the force gone. You only see one forces. So these forces multiplied by the D, you get moment. This one is clockwise, oh, sorry, anti clockwise. Then for the another side also, I alpha moment plus MA. Again, train this one. MA is a force. Force multiplied by the distance to this the R. You get this one. Eh? So in kinetic diagram, you use R and not your X direction. Eh? Same with this one. So just, just, just be careful on that. Eh? Right. So for your moment equation on the right hand side is omega r alpha. Okay. Then the rest is general plane motion. General plane motion means you have rotation and translation. You have two two uh, two motion combined together. Right. Still the same. Free body diagram is all the force with the effect of gravity kinetic diagram you looking at the second moment of inertia ig alpha plus the gravitational mass and acceleration the rest you read still we are applying the same equation mg equal to ig alpha m equal to m f equal to m okay uh, So you still remember before this, we, we introduced you one method called IC, the zero gravity. You use Euler vector, then you draw the meeting point intersect one. Uh, so you, you can also solve using the same method. You look at IC point, where you look at M moment from IC equal to I alpha. Still the same equation, M equal to I alpha, but this one you look from IC point. These are the all the application for civil side. Lah. So you see the, the dumb wheel here. So there's a pin at the center. So you have a force and the mass and then the G force here and then friction, contact forces and so on. All right. Uh, so F equal to MA. So free body diagram left hand side, free body uh, kinetic diagram on the right hand side. So kinetic diagram always called change all your acceleration combined with the mass, you get force, force, the purpose of combining because you want to calculate the moment. So your moment will, will have to consider Ig alpha. Okay, so let's see one example. Then we call it a day. Huh? Okay, so um, you have a round body again, and then this one was have two position means you have a two coil, one is outside radius, one is inside radius. Uh, so 
uh, at point, you see, uh, uh, determine angular acceleration of spool. The, the spool have a mass of eight kilogram, radius of gyration 0 0.35. Uh, the cord of, the cord of, uh, you can ignore the mass, right? And it was pulled with the 100 Newton. So how do we solve? Huh? So when you pull, when you pull, you look at the object center of mass. Where does the center of mass move? Does it move up or move down? In this case, it moves up. All right, when you pull this one, the whole object will, although it rotate, but the center of gravity, it moves up. All right. So, the body diagram, kinetic diagram. On the left hand side is all the force. On the right hand side for kinetic is the acceleration and the mass and alpha and IG. So, so you have two, two there. Central of mass, the G always give you W. Oops. My PC tell me to stop, right? Okay, then you have a force 100 Newton at this location. At point A, point A also hang with a, a rope, which is give you a T you don't know. Equal to kinetic, you see kinetic, it always consists of acceleration multiplied by mass and then one more, which is I alpha. Okay, so it cannot run away from I alpha when you have a rotating body. Huh? All right. So IG equal to MK square. Remember this formula. The question gives you gyration. Automatic, you know, you need to, you can use this equation. IG equal to MK square. Fix already, yeah? So you substitute, you find your IG, and then the rest, you solve the three equations. Okay, I'll give you two solutions. Again, one, you look at gravitational, G, central mass, you solve the three equations. Another one, you focus on one reference point, O or P or somewhere else. In this case, you can focus on A. So I'll give you two solutions. One is focus on G point. So MG equal to IG alpha and F equal to MA. You substitute all the value, you get the missing parameter, all right? In this case, X do not move anywhere. So X zero, huh? because the spool only move up when you pull 100 Newton. Okay. Then the alpha of G, how you find? You use alpha R because it, we move in the tangent direction. Okay, let's look at the second method. Huh? Now, second method, huh, you see what is different here? You focus on A point rather than the center of mass. So the moment at A equal to kinetic moment at A. What is a bit different here is, is you need to be careful on the moment side compared to the previous one. Because if you shift your, your, your focus to A, there's a force at G already. So you, you will see this one come up from the other side. Still the same. Huh? Ah, there's one more solution from IC one. Um, so IC, same. You use two equations, M IC, M A equal to I alpha. So at M A, you look at here, the blue color one is the free body diagram. The right hand side is the kinetic diagram. So your A equal to IG plus MD square. You substitute, you still get the same answer, all right? 13, 13, your homework, I do not uh, want to discuss. It's still the same. Go home and read, huh? Example 13, your homework. Okay. Uh, next lecture, we continue example 14. Okay, your homework, go and read uh, example 13. Huh? Okay, we stop here.